guys and welcome to the December episode of Books and Blankets. This is a podcast where we talk about all things bookish and cosy. I am Mercedes, I have a booktube channel called Mercy's Bookish Musings and my co-host is... I'm Lauren and I have a booktube channel at Lauren and the Books. Merry Christmas Mercedes! Merry, merry, merry Christmas. Merry Christmas indeed. You feeling Christmassy? I wasn't. Oh god. <laughs> and, and then I was by like I put my decorations up two days ago, which yeah. was the eleventh. So I'm starting to feel more Christmassy. But as I was saying to you a few minutes ago, I haven't done any Christmas shopping. Naughty girl. Yeah. So I think Naughty I need girl. to do it. We can talk about our Christmasiness. This is the Christmas episode, guys. So we're going to be talking about all things Christmassy today. Yes. Um, but we will start, actually, before we even talk about what we're reading at the moment, I will say you can get in touch with us um, using our Twitter handle, which is at Books and Blanket, or you can go on the Instagram account, which is at Books and Blanket Podcast, or you can email us at uh, Books and Blanket Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll I mean, be in the description box anyway. Yeah, fling it towards that. If that's not it, you may as well just have a little whisper out the window. Yeah. <laughs> if that's not it. Um, and what are you reading at the moment, Mercedes? Well, I've got a bit of a weird combo going on. Well, I'm excited because when we were voxering before this, you said that there's a book that you're reading at the moment that you're really enjoying. And I haven't heard those words come out of your mouth for a long time. So I I feel excited for you. Well, that book is an epic fantasy. Yeah. Wow. So I realised recently. A new series? Yep. (gasps) I realised recently that I've just not been loving reading. And the only things I was craving is one really serious nonfiction, weirdly, because everything else felt like, I don't know, just it wasn't getting me. So I was picking up loads of the sort of depressing literary fiction books that I usually read. And just like wasn't appreci- Merry Christmas. Yeah. And just wasn't appreciating the language or anything like that and just thought this isn't working for me. So I thought, Do you know what will work for me? Some epic fantasy where it's like based on just nice characters and, you know, some action going on. Nothing yeah. nothing to worry about in terms of language, right? It's not going to be based on how beautifully written it is. Mm-hmm. So, had a little look on what people were chatting about on the old uh, booktube, and I saw quite a few people talking about The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. Nice. It's the first book in a new trilogy. The second book's already out. So, I think the third book comes out next year. So, if I pace them right, then I'll read, like, one every few months. Yeah. Which is good. And do you know what? It's actually quite... This is the thing with fantasy... On the back, this is the tagline. As destiny calls, a journey begins. <gasps> it sounds like a tattoo. Epic. <laughs> and um, I picked it up in the library and the prologue is just typical epic fantasy. Like, it's so lame. Like I read it out to Johnny. It's actually hilarious. But if you're willing to, like, overlook those things about, you know, the genre, it's just... Really... Looking wistfully into the distance and there yeah, being some wind yeah, like and a light cold, and cold tracks, weather. Yeah, all this stuff, you know. Um, yeah, like, the guy's wearing a cloak in the first scene. Oh, I bet, yeah. yeah. and all this stuff's going on. So, but if you go past that, then it's your standard fare, right? It's this young boy who's at this sort of school for magic who finds out that he's really important and he's going to save the world. And he's got a couple of mates in tow. Standard nice. fare. However, it's just what I'm looking for because... It's easy. I don't have to, like, worry that I'm not appreciating the language properly. Mm-hmm. There's people that are easy to like. I'm intrigued by the the history and the magic of the world. And I'm just really, really enjoying it. And actually... Oh, I'm so pleased. I, I want to be reading, do you know what I mean? Like, I've, it has been ages since I've gone to work thinking, God, I wish I could start home and read this book. Do you know, I, I was... Like, when you said to me, like, I haven't heard you say oh, I'm reading a book at the moment and I'm really enjoying it and I want to make sure I read some tonight. I haven't heard you say that in months. I know, know. Maybe not even this year. I know. And the thing is, is I used to always read on the bus and I've stopped doing it lately because I've just not really felt like it. And today, or the last couple of days, I've taken my book to work with me thinking, oh, I'll be able to read it on the bus. And there's Mm. this lovely new girl I work with who, unfortunately, this sounds horrible, gets the same bus as me. (laughs) Oh, that is... But I do hate that, though, because then you can't read or do your chill out or you prepare yourself for work. And she's lovely, but... Then yesterday, I was thinking, yes, I'll read a couple of chapters before work. And then I saw her at the bus stop and I thought, OK, I won't. Oh. <laughs> so um, but that shows how much I'm liking it. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. And then, It does. And then what's the flip reverse it? The, the, <laughs> the big... flip reverse it is a very dry <clears throat> academic book, which is White Trash, the 400 year untold history of class in America. Oh, wow. Well, is that have you been reading that before? or No, you had one about. What was, was the one you were reading I was before? Reading the one about the history. 
racism in America. Yeah. yeah. So now it's class. Yeah, now it's class. And this one is written in a similar style, very, you know, historical, talking about all these different presidents and all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I just feel like there's no in between for me at the moment. I even want to read stuff that's really that really matters and yeah. not even memoir. I just want it to be really hardcore, like informative nonfiction. All easy page turn and fiction cloak yeah exactly <laughs> and there's no in between easy so cloaks that's my pair of random books how about you well, I'm, I'm so pleased that you're enjoying one yeah, I, I'll me too. reiterate it i'm so pleased you're enjoying one so it is um december obviously it's christmas month and yeah. i like to read christmas books throughout the month of december so i'm currently um reading two one of which is proper lame but in a similar way like i'm enjoying reading different things that i wouldn't normally read so at the moment i'm reading a book called Alan the Christmas Donkey. Oh my god. By um Tracy Garson, which is a non fiction account of a woman who's opened a donkey sanctuary and um a donkey comes to her at Christmas called Alan. Um and it's just quite nice and sweet, like it's the sort of thing like your mum or your nan would like. Yeah. But uh, it's fine and it's not like it's it literally there's no effort involved in it at all. Um and I'm also reading um, Christmas Days by Jeanette Winterson, the short story collection. Yeah. So that is 12 Christmas stories, which I recently found out you're supposed to start on Christmas Day because the, the Christmas oh. or Christmas Tide or whatever it is um, runs from Christmas Day. But I had a bath tonight and I just fancied reading like a short story, like something that I could finish in the bath. So I read the first, like the introduction, which isn't a short story. I thought it was a short story and it's not. It's about the history of Christmas. And yeah, it was just really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it was only like 15 pages of, of that, but interesting and really nicely written as well, which I can't say for Alan the Christmas Donkey. <laughs> but um, yeah, poor so I've Alan. been reading a lot of uh, poor old Alan. So I've been reading a lot of Christmas books. So, but yeah, I'm feeling suitably Christmassy. So you've got your decks up. Yeah. I put them up a couple of days ago because we weren't feeling particularly Christmassy. Yeah, and that's because I'm really bad with Christmas shopping, so I never do any until around this time. Yeah, and I usually put the tree up earlier, so we feel a bit more festive. Right, and um, yeah, just hadn't gotten around to it, so we put it up on Sunday, and we had Christmas music playing while we did it, and we had a log fire on the TV. Oh, and the old Netflix log fire, lovely. Exactly, and it was really, really nice. And then. Um, we had some like Christmas candles lit. I think partly last year I had the um, Yankee Candle Christmas Advent calendar. Oh yeah, we both had it, didn't we? Yeah, and this year I've not I had quite a lot left over though. Did you? Yeah, or... I did. Yeah. Yeah. But I really liked that because then over the rest of December I still had candles to use. Yeah. But this year I've not got an Advent calendar at all. Oh, Mercedes, that is sad. I know. So I've not really got the countdown to Christmas, and I think I'm just quite busy at work, so it just feels. But I think once I um, do my Christmas shopping, I'll feel more Christmas. But also, for me, so much of what I love about Christmas is the time after Christmas, before I have to yeah, go back so to work. I've, I've realised that as well, that the, the lead up to Christmas, although I'm excited because it's almost Christmas, I'm almost stressing out because have I got everything, have I doing that? Yeah, blah, exactly. Blah, blah. And then when it's here, that's when you can just enjoy it. Yeah, and I think... I'm feeling pretty Christmassy. I mean, Dave and I get pretty into it, don't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly. I don't know how you could not feel Christmassy in your household. <laughs> <laughs> we, take the day off, we take the 1st of December off of work and we put our tree up together. I'd like, that's we took so the day cute. off work. And you have a like Christmas snack table and everything. We've got a Christmas snack table. We've got an advent calendar we've made for ourselves. So we take it in turns to open a present every day. Um, we tried to make it so they would be like a pound present a day. Yeah, yeah. But you just can't get stuff for a pound. No, no. Like, it's so hard. So so it's gone up to sort of like somewhere in the region between like a pound and five pounds. I've opened mine today. David's not here at the moment. He's away for the for the night. But I've just opened mine and I had a nice jar of pip and nut cashew butter. Oh, have you tried like that before? Peanut butter. No, I had the peanut and cinnamon last year. Mm. I think my sister got it for my birthday in like a little like pip and nut set. Um, and yeah, so I'm excited about that. But I feel like I'm going to hang on to it. I watched... Um, a video. This is just me and Mercedes having a chat. This is nothing even to do with Christmas. Um, I watched Angelica Kofa. She did a What I Eat in a Day video. Yeah. And she put her pip and nut in hot chocolate. Ooh. Maybe like peanut butter hot chocolate and on porridge. So I feel like I might save it for when I'm being a vegan in January. Yeah. So they're called pip and nut. Pip and nut. Yeah. And it's really good. It's like they don't use palm oil or anything like that. So it's um and they're vegan and yeah it's nice. They 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 do them in Sainsbury's. Oh, I'll have to have a look. But the peanut and cinnamon one I had last year was lovely. I love cinnamon. As you know, I'm sure I bang oh. on about it all the frickin' time. 
a good time of the year, isn't it? So have you been eating much uh, Christmassy food? I have had some sort of Christmas biscuits Because you're and stuff. the sort of like um, Marks and Spencer's affiliate link, haven't you? Was yeah, you... oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm really bad with Marks and Spencer's. I think I've said this on the podcast before. And people at work say like, I just couldn't afford it. And obviously I'm on the same money as them. And I'm like, well, I can't afford it. I have a really big overdraft. But the reason I shop at Marks and Spencer's a lot isn't so much because I have loads of money. It's because Johnny and I can't cook. They have a lot of like prepared stuff and yeah. delicious prepared. So there's a lot of like everything's already chopped and in that pot for you. Yeah. Just stick it in the oven and it's delicious. Yeah, exactly. And Yeah, it is nice. So I like that. But yeah, so I have been having a little uh, look at their uh, Christmas stuff. And someone I work with, this is how bad my reputation is for going to Marks and Spencers, rung me the other day at my desk and was like, are you going to m s tonight? Because I've heard they've got some Christmas Jaffa cakes I want to try. So can you what? get me some? Yeah. So they're Clementine and Cranberry. Oh my god, I have not seen them in there. We've got a Marks and Spencers near us, yeah. and there's, they're not in there. I've, I've they're dark chocolate. That. Oh, I need to have a look. But I don't like them. Oh, don't you? No, so I bought, right, this is how childish I am. I bought her a box, and I bought another box so that I could come home and open it and take loads of photos of the cats and then message her all lean and <laughs> pretending the cats were eating her Jaffa cakes. So did you know at that point you weren't going to like them? No, I thought I was going to like oh, them, so right, I okay. thought I was going to like double benefit the I prank thing. Like- hated Jaffa Cakes and you just did that purely for the photo opportunity no so I just like, took loads of photos of Albus like the first one he's just like looking at the box the next one is like the box open and stuff like this right because I'm pathetic and then Johnny and I were like well we might as well try them now nah, they're horrible now the cat's licked them yeah everyone at work really likes them I just think they're too sweet which is weird because I love sweet because it's dark chocolate as well that's yeah. unusual to have something sweet with that's got dark chocolate on it yeah just... so the things I've been enjoying particularly from Marks and Spencer's and I know you've been enjoying them too because we've spoken about them are the tortilla cinnamon and chocolate oh yeah I love oh my god they're delicious I've also been enjoying the mould fruit infusion tea I've not tried um, that it's very nice. Um, you're, you're still not sold on fruit teas, though, are you? Yeah, but I've seen one I do want to try in there that's black They've got tea. Chai tea as well. Is that the one you're talking Or oh, the spice one. It's in a really nice pot. Yeah, and I'm going to treat myself it for the Christmas break. Yeah, that does look nice, but I don't eat I don't, I don't eat. Yeah, black I know. Tea. I did look at it and it was going to tell you about it, but then I knew it was black. So it's black tea with yeah. Christmas spices and it's like clove, cardamom, cinnamon. It sounds and amazing. And you can still have milk in that, so that'll be like super duper cozy. Yeah. Yeah, and it's in a really nice tin as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also, I've obviously been enjoying the festive Percy Pigs. Oh, I didn't know there was any. Yes, they're nice. Oh, I'll have to get some. So, yeah, but I've just been I've been smashing that. And then I went for Christmas dinner at my friend's house last weekend, and he made me the most amazing nut roast. Like, it was a risotto base and then, like, formed into a loaf tin. And it was just the most delicious nut roast, the most delicious vegetarian thing I've ever eaten in my life. Oh, that sounds good. What are you having for Christmas for your... Because you're doing so, two Christmas lunches, aren't you? Yeah, which I'm not happy about. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite bit of Christmas. Um, yeah, is I heard you say this. I agree. Is the day is like the day, yeah, the buffet stuff. Like I love buffet. We're not stuff. getting one either, though. Oh, Mercedes, we're just gonna be so sad. Johnny's Christmas... nanny's doing a curry on Boxing Day. I mean, I I like the idea of that, but also I I prefer picky bits. Yeah, me too. I prefer a curry to two bloody roast dinners back yeah, to back. You're screwed. I don't even like. So on Christmas Day, we're at David's mum and dad's. David's mum is an amazing cook. She's really, really good. And she would have catered for me wonderfully. I don't know what she's got planned. And I've left it in her very, very capable hands. And it will be wonderful. So I'm excited about that. And she also does picky stuff in the evening. So I know that that is all covered. Yeah. However. Your family. (laughs) What's in day? My mum is much more of a sort of dollop cooker. She just cooks dollops and stuff. Right. Um, So I probably got some sort of pre done nut roast which might be fine but also might be crap um and i know there'll be a cauliflower cheese but which i do like cauliflower, oh, yeah, cheese. I like cauliflower cheese well so, i yeah. told my mum that... what about you so where are you and what are you doing we're at my mum's for christmas day yeah and i've told my mum that she... my mum was like, i'll get you a nice nut roast from somewhere but i quite like having a little peruse of this sort of thing so yeah I'm a... i've told her not that not to and that i'll get it from m s I was going to say, Marks and Spencer's not got any going on. They have, yeah. So, um, Do you know what I would like, and I might even see if I can order it online, is the vegetarian haggis. I know, me too. That's quite spicy in like, not a Christmas, but it's like quite peppery, isn't it? That would yeah. be quite, but I've only ever seen that in the shops around Burns Night, which well, is exciting because that's also coming round. So I'm going to buy a shit ton and freeze them. Oh, that's a good idea. 
but I've only ever seen the vegetarian. Although in, I mean, you're in Norwich. That's where the most vegetarians are. Do you ever see vegetarian haggis in the shops? I've never been in. I've never been in the Norwich Sainsbury's. It's on the other side of the city. Oh, don't don't bother walking there. We've then. got a new vegan restaurant. Another one in Norwich oh, opened up a couple of weeks okay. ago. It's called the Tipsy oh, Vegan. Oh, very nice. It's got a really good looking menu, so uh, I need to try and go there. You definitely do. Mm. Oh, lovely. Um, yeah, and then we're at Johnny's Nanny's with Johnny's family. For curry. For curry on Boxing Day. Does she understand vegetarian? Well, yeah, but then Johnny's mum has just said she'll just make us a vegetarian chilli and take it around with her. Oh. Do you want chilli or do you want curry? I feel like I'd rather curry. I tell you what, I've had a curry before that had Brussels in it and that was exciting. Yeah, if I just tell Johnny's mum that I'd rather a curry, she will make a curry and she's a really good cook, so... Johnny's mum, I'd rather have a curry, actually. (laughs) Stop making that chilli. Put it in the bin. I'll have a curry. So, um, yeah, and then what I said to Johnny is, because I'm very sad about the whole non-buffet thing, is that I'm just going to buy Johnny and I a buffet for the day after Boxing Day. Well, the sad thing is, I mean, um, if they're listening to this, I'm delighted and I can't wait to go, but we're going to my friend's house for her birthday on the day after Boxing Day. Oh, what a selfish day to have a birthday. Well, well, it's her birthday on Boxing Day, so we can't even, so we're not even seeing her on her birthday. We're actually going the day after her birthday, and I don't think that's a buffet either. God, what are these people doing? David and I are lying. So on the 28th, we're going to tell my family we're at his family, and his family we're at my family, and we're going to sit and eat food all day. Sounds good, sounds good. So that's when I'm going to have my buffet, and it's going to be me and David buffeting up. Um, One more food item I've tried, and I absolutely urge you to try it because it is the most delicious thing I've, Christmassy thing I've eaten this year. Mm. No, I've already said that about the nut roast. It's the second most delicious Christmassy thing I've eaten. The Leon vegan Christmas wrap. I don't know if we've got a Leon in Norwich. Well, I I I feel like maybe they're only London based because there used to be one in Bluewater near where I live and they closed it and it, yeah. it's now filled. Um, but if you're in London or anywhere, anyone that's listening to this, <laughs> eat a Leon vegan wrap. It's amazing. It's sweet potato falafel with cranberry um, sauce with a sage veganaise, pine nuts and crispy onions. That oh, sounds really good. The sages, it was amazing. I had it for the first time yesterday, I, but I inhaled it, basically. <laughs> and then I, was meet, I met up with Jean, and I said to Jean, Jean, I've just had this most amazing vegan um, Leon wrap. It was amazing. She'd never been to a Leon before, and we were supposed to be going to the book club at half past six. We walked to find a Leon just so she could have one, too. <laughs> I so thought you were going to say you got another one. No, I didn't. I mean, no, I didn't. I was good. I didn't. But I wish I'd bought one and just kept it with me and then had it today. Because even the day after, I think it'd be delicious. It was amazing. Oh, that does sound good. Yeah, I do need to eat some more Christmas food. Like a Brussels floor. That sounds really good. I like Brussels sprouts. I love them. Yeah. And they normally do like a Brussels floor. I was so taken by the vegan wrap, I couldn't even think of anything else. But yeah, that was good. What other Christmassy bits have you been eating? Anything exciting? I've not really. But I have been eyeing up all the... Christmassy stuff in M&S, obviously. <laughs> and they've got loads of lovely looking... But like, around the summertime, iron up the spirit of summer. Around yeah. the summertime, iron up all the Christmas food. Yeah, it's really bad. So, so I, I am more thinking, like I said, that Christmas is my time. Because I, I have 12 days off for Christmas. Yeah, I've got 11 days off. I'm so pumped. Yeah, it's very exciting. So, yeah, mainly excited about the food. And I know what I'm getting for Christmas. Oh, are you, are you going to disclose? Yep. So I didn't want anything for Christmas. So my mum was like, that's a bit boring, but, we'll, you know, we'll just give you a bit of money or whatever. My mum has decided she's going to knit me something, which I'm a bit worried oh, about. Oh, that's cute, though. Yeah, I'm hoping it's... Well... Not shit. Yeah, I'm hoping <laughs> it's not shit. But my stepdad said that when she'd finished it, he said, why can't we keep it? So I think it's going to be like a throw for the sofa. Because oh, he nice. wouldn't want to keep a jumper, would he? Cause... Yeah, that's true. And or a, a hat with Mercedes on the front. Exactly. And she sent me a picture <laughs> of the wool, and it's like this really nice sort of grey. but like... Might be like a lovely big crocheted blanket or yeah, something. Yeah, that's what I think it's going to be. Oh, that's lovely. That's a lovely gift. I'm very excited about that, but that's not what it was. So that's like, oh. you know, little mini things. Yeah. So um, anyway, my mum was like, I'll just give you some money because you're being boring or whatever. <laughs> and then... Um, she rang me up a couple of weeks ago and was like, because Johnny and I really want a Nintendo Switch. Oh, wow. Yeah, my friend's got one. Yeah, but we're like, oh, they're quite a lot of money. And, you know, we, you know, it's just a lot of money, basically. And then um, we kept hinting at my little brother to come around and lend us his. 
And so my little brother said to my mum, well, why don't you just, uh, rather than give Johnny a Mercedes like, separate get him presents, a Nintendo Switch. get him a Nintendo Switch between them. So my mum rang me up, bless her, to check. Because she was like, I'm really worried that you're going to like buy one on your credit card before Christmas. Yeah. And I was like, nah, mate, that'd be the best Christmas present ever. So I feel like a 10-year-old again, because I'm getting a games console for Christmas. That is exciting. And then think of that time you've got off in between. Yeah. You two are going to be, like, fighting to play it all the time. Well, we do, um, we want to play all Mario games. And um, historically, when new Mario games have come out, Johnny and I have played them and done a level each. That That is our plan. Oh, that's nice. So then the other person could be, like, making tea yeah. and getting the snacks in while the other person's doing it, toilet break, etc. Exactly. It's going to be amazing. I'm very, very excited. And I have asked for... Like, usually I make, as you know, a massive Christmas book list. Yeah, that was and my the, next question. Have you asked for any books? So, and then if I get money, I buy more books. I usually get about 50 or 60 books, which is excessive, I know. What I did this year is, is my mum asked me to make a little wish list, and mainly I put candles on it. Yeah. And I put a few books, but what I did is I put books on there that I've read this year that I really enjoyed, but that I either got from the library, so don't own, or that I got sent an advanced reader's copy of so it's not like a nice edition yeah and i only added two books to the wish list that i hadn't read that sorry oh. yeah so so i won't like have an excessive amount of books to read what book are you hoping to get most out of all of your books on your book wish on your book christmas oh list god i can't even remember what i put on there because i'm thinking about one that i really really want and i can't believe i haven't bought it because i want it so bad well Obviously, mine are normally because I just want the finished copy. So I, I would like the finished copy of Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Yeah. I added that because I've got the advanced copy. Oh, no, i tell you what other one I want that I haven't got. Is that big... Standard um... Chandelier. No. The what? Standard Chandelier, the new Lionel Shriver one. No. That's top of my list. Is it? I want it bad. I can't believe I haven't bought it myself yet. When did it come I've out? Well, she was talking about it on a good on a good read. Let me have a look. But I checked and thought, oh, maybe it's coming out in the new year. But it's really gone by quietly, hasn't it? Well, this is the thing. I didn't know anything about it until I saw someone mention it on Twitter, like, yesterday. I think it's been out for a while. I'm just having a look now. It's about friendship and it's, I, I just feel really excited. The 2nd of November. Yeah, that's completely gone under the radar. Why has it gone so quiet? I don't know. Do you think it's shit? Well, I just know she's had a bit of stuff going on recently hasn't she the last couple of years she's made a lot of comments sort of said stuff that isn't very sort of politically correct mm. and so i don't know if it's led to her not getting as big publicity as she used to yeah so she did a, a conference she was the spokesperson at a conference in may have been denmark some uh, somewhere around that area and she said that she, she didn't agree with like the idea of you know own voices or whatever yeah so i think since then there's been like less buzz about her because i think it was a bit controversial you know for, yeah i was just surprised because i heard it on um i heard her talking about it on um a good read and then i was like oh that must be coming out in the new year and then checked and saw that it's out now and thought well i want that and i can't believe i haven't bought it yeah well, you'd have to tell me because i was it sounded it sounded to me more like, because i've only read the post birthday world which mm. is like one of my favorite books that i've read this year and i absolutely loved it and the plot sounded more like that than her other books did. So her other books, she always picks a big issue, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, exactly. But this one's about um, two couples and um, they know each other because a man in one couple and a woman in the other couple um, are best friends and they've always been best friends and they had a dalliance in the past, but both couples accept that and that's fine and they're just... And it's about friendship and oh, male okay. friendship and stuff. And I was like, that sounds to me more like the post-birthday world yeah. does. Say, for instance, like Big Brother does or the Mandibles or something yeah, like that. Yeah, definitely. So I felt excited about it. So. Oh, that is exciting. Yeah. Mine is uh, that History of Magic book. Oh, what, the Harry Potter one? Yeah. I've got that for my dad for Christmas. Have you? We got tickets to go to the um, the exhibition at the British Library, so I bought him that book to put the tickets inside. Oh, that's exciting. They're yeah. Right, they're going to be at the Forum in Norwich, at our library. Oh, are they touring it after? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's only on until the end of February. We're going, I think we're either going the last weekend or the second to last weekend, because I was like, oh, we can go any weekend, We and that was the only weekend they had free tickets. Yeah, yeah. So me, my dad and my sister are going. So oh, that'd that, be nice. He'll be very excited about that. But yeah, it does look beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. And also, I wasn't really bothered by the Fantastic Beasts book. 
I know, I saw someone reviewing it and I was like, I want it. I know, and it's beautiful. Weirdly, yeah. it's not Jim Kay who's done the actual books. No, it... but it's so similar to Jim Kay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But to be fair, like, haven't read... So I reread the Philosopher's Stone in the Illustrated Edition and then I read The Chamber of Secrets for the first time in it and I'm now reading Prisoner of Azkaban for the first time in the Illustrated Edition. And reading them all very closely together, you notice that the majority of things Jim Kay chooses to draw are the creatures... Yeah, he obviously just really enjoys draw- drawing the like the animals, and so yeah. the illustrations in the Prisoner of Azkaban. There's so many drawings of Crookshanks and Scabbers. Oh, I want to get them framed. The ones. Yeah, that I love him. Yeah, he's pretty adorable. Yeah. So, oh no, that's a good one to have though. So yeah, but my other things I've got on my Christmas list that I'm desperate for are <laughs> um, a pair of slippers called Mahabis. I've shown you them, haven't I? Oh, those ones that you can walk outside in? Yeah, and you've got like a sole. So they're in like dark grey or light grey, and then you can put a sole on to go outside. Oh, now, I, I just, have made this... I don't get it. Clear. Oh, you don't want them? You don't feel excited by it? You're not mad on slippers anyway, though, are you? Well, I don't wear slippers because we have... Yeah, I don't really wear slippers because I'm just too lazy to take them off every time I get on the sofa. But what I don't get is just just wear slip-on shoes when you go out. Yeah, I know, but it's just like, they just look so Scandinavian and just look lovely and like they look really cosy and I'm excited about them. You're Let me be excited about them. Right. And then the next thing I want, which I feel like when I tell people, they think I'm joking, but I am not joking. And if I don't get one, I'm going to buy one myself. I want a toasty maker. Yeah, that is a good you know, call, like actually. a Breville, like one of yeah, those like yeah. deep sandwich things. And I was like, when I'm being a vegan, that's going to come in well handy. Yeah, definitely. And do you know what else someone told me that they'd done? They put mince meat in a toasty maker in and made like a mince meat sandwich. What as in like sweet mince meat? Yeah, like so. Yeah, I should have made that clear. Like mince, like as in mince pies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, tasty. <laughs> when I'm a vegan, eating mince meat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the mince, like so they make like a like a deep foot. You know, like McDonald's used to do it. Do you remember? Yeah. Well, God, they used to scald your mouth. Yeah. So that's yeah. what it must be like. That is pretty. Exciting. I really hope I've got one. Otherwise, I'll be disappointed. My mum, like, I honestly, I thought I had one for my birthday because my mum was saying, so, if, um, you know, if you get a toasty maker, you need one with removable plates because it's easier to wash up. And I was like, yeah, 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 thinking she was just priming me for the fact that she got me one. And she hadn't. That's not good enough, is it? I mean, like, first world problems, but I do really want one. <laughs> so, yeah, so you don't really read Christmas books, do you, Mercedes? No, I have got a few that I, I've had for the last couple of years. Yeah. And I keep every year in December, I think, right, I'll get those off the shelf and I'll I'll read those. Mm. And then, I don't know, I just don't feel like, I don't know. I don't, and, and most of mine, to be fair, so I've got the Jeanette Winterson one. Yeah. And then the other three I've got are all children's ones. And I don't know, I just don't know if I'm into the idea of like reading... I don't know what it is. And now I'm trying to not like be thinking of what I'm going to read next. Yeah, I've um yeah, I was I was thinking that for January actually that that's something I want to do. But I have sort of been doing that. So I had this big pile of Christmas books and I was just sort of pick them up as I want. I didn't have an order and that felt like a bit of a, a treat for me. Yeah. So like, yeah, I'm trying to just so I got them off the shelf yesterday and then I was like why have you done this and I put them all back on. Yeah. Cuz I want to What do... children's ones have you got? So I've got the Moomin Land Midwinter one. Yeah, I've got that too. And then I've got, which I bought this a couple of years ago. And Apparently that was... Moomin Land Midwinter is quite depressing though, so it's not very Oh, Christmas. is it? Okay. Yeah. Maybe not then. Um, <laughs> the one I have got is called Nicholas St. North and the Battle of the Nightmare King. Oh, I remember you talking about this last year. Yeah, and their the series is called The Guardians by William Joyce. And each book is about like the chief fairy, the Easter Bunny. This one's obviously Father Christmas. Yeah, and it would probably take like two hours to read. I mean, the font is massive, and it is a child, like a children's book. Yeah. So I think I would like to, because obviously the way Christmas falls this year, it's on a Monday, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So it means I actually have three days off before Christmas. Yeah. So I might just like read this on Christmas Eve. Oh, that'd be lovely. Because like, we're not snuggle down. Yeah, we're not doing anything Christmas Eve. We're at home, so I might do that. And also, I haven't mentioned this to you, Johnny and I are hiring a car for Christmas. Oh, lovely, so you can be cruising about. Yes, and we decided to hire it for eight days, so the, the majority of the time I'm off, we actually have a car, so it's not just, like, to drive to see family for Christmas. You can go to Sainsbury's and see if they've got any vegetarian haggis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, we've got to take Albus to the vets right before Christmas, yeah. because uh, 
he's butt wiping. He keeps scooting along. Oh, he might have wormies. No, he's not. We think he's glands. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's not got worms, but we think he's glands oh. and he's squeezing. Oh, lovely. Oh, I don't know what's worse, worms or squeezy glands. Yeah, Merry well, Christmas, I'm hoping Steve I can go in and take him to the vets and then go, look, can I just step out while you do the gland squeezing? I don't think they're going to let me, but... Oh, um, even just saying that, it's giving me... I don't want to be in there when they do it. No one does. So, yeah, so I've booked him in for the Friday. So we pick the car up and our first thing to do is to take him to the vets. Oh, that'll be fun. Because he cries the whole way there in a the car. Squeezed all through the car, oh. stinking on the way home. I hope not. I'll have to clean it. It's a higher car. Yeah, you will. Um, I listened to the audiobook of the Christmasaurus, which I read last year. Mm. Um, very much enjoyed it. But the, the audiobook is lovely, Mercedes. So if you're looking for a Christmassy audiobook, now, it's not like you're not going to get a lot of, like, value for money. Yeah. Because it's five right. hours long. But it is, it's read by an old man. He does the voices lovely. It's like really listening to like a lovely story. He does the songs really cute. It's really, really lovely. Oh, so, that's good. I mean, I would recommend it to you. Do you feel like you'll do it? No. Yeah, I do, f- I do. I feel like I'll maybe do some Christmas books. But I don't think, well, the thing is now is I'm just loving this epic fantasy. 700 pages long. Yeah, but that can be a Christmas treat. But anything, if you put the word Christmas in front of anything, Sadie, it can be a Christmas treat. Yeah, that's true. So I am going to try and read some festive books, but I don't know if I'll read all four. Do you get much reading done on the actual Christmas Day and around the Christmas period? At Christmas Day, I'll read nothing, like on Christmas Day. Um, Not even when you go to bed? No, because like, so if we were with my family, we won't go to bed till like midnight. And, so it's time for sleep sleep. And usually by that point, like, my brothers and Johnny have had a few drinks and people are just, like, pranking each other through the bedroom walls because, like, <laughs> all of us are standing at our arms, like, in this small house. So all the naughty just, peoples. Exactly, just winding each other up and stuff. So it's a pretty relentless day, in all honesty, when it's with my family. Oh, wow. Johnny's family, even though Johnny's family are, like, so... This is weird to explain johnny's the youngest so his family's Mm. older like his siblings whereas i'm one of the older ones in my family so my family's younger does that make sense that does make sense yeah Yeah. so but my family is um just i've got three brothers i've got two brothers and uh two step brothers so yeah and then johnny's got two sisters so my family tends to be louder and um, not much time for reading no no, there isn't. So um, usually on Boxing Day, I spend a bit of time, like, whatever books I get, I read, like, the blurb in the first couple of pages of each one. Which I yeah, really so I did with... that. David's mum one year got me loads of Penguin modern classics. Yeah. And I remember, like, everyone else was playing board games. And they were like, come and play board games, Lauren. And I was literally just sat with all these books. And I'm talking, like, there was about 20 of them. Um, and I was just sit like, reading the back and reading the first line. And it was just wonderful. It is. I love doing that. So yeah. I will probably miss that this year. But... At the same time, I won't have the added pressure of having loads of my books. Yeah. Oh, my God, I forgot to tell you. What? So the other Sunday evening, this is this is how just crazy my life is. Like, if this doesn't show you how much of a rebel I am, I don't know what will. <laughs> yeah. I was watching a video on YouTube of someone, like, talking about unhauling books. Yeah. And I've done two big unhauls this year. I never talk about it on my channel because, you know, I just can't be bothered to like go through them all. But I've, I've, each time I've done it, I've probably got rid of about 50 books, I guess. And you never fucking tell me about it. No, I know. I always just do it on a whim. So on Sunday, I was watching this video and I was inspired. And I thought, do you know what? Every time I've done it, each time I do it, I'm less generous as to what I keep. Yeah. You get... It just, it just becomes easier, right? It's like stages of, like, letting go sort of thing. And um, I just feel like this was the time I was just like, I'm done. Like, I'm not even going to try and be nice and feel bad that I maybe paid £15 for this, like, three, four years yeah. ago. Ruthless. I was ruthless. And it was half past 11 at night. No, it was it was half... It was, like, half 10 when I started doing it. And uh, I didn't finish till uh, half past one in the morning. Bad girl. Yep, and then I had to get up for work at seven. But it was it was a delight. I I got rid you of You cleansed afterwards. Yeah, I felt really cleansed. I got rid of about sixty five books. Amazing. For the first time in years I own less than two hundred books I haven't read. That's amazing. Just under two hundred. And there were so many books where I because this when I was watching the video, 
this like and I watched like a few different videos about Anna Hall and people were just saying like if you pick it up and you just you've had it for three or four years and you've never felt excited to read it then yeah. why have you still got it and there was so yeah. many of my books on my shelves like that where like I'd gone for a period of like being really into a certain thing and so I just like bought every single random book I could find on it and then I read the first 10 pages and thought this is rubbish and then thought, oh, no, I've just paid for it. I'll give it a chance. And then it just sat there for years. And in my head, it become a book that I had to give a chance. But then inevitably never would because no. there's all these other books that sound way better and I actually want to read. So I was ruthless. Well done. So what have you done with them all? Take them to the charity shop? No, they're um, all in a big stack. And I'm like, Johnny's go, going through them all and sort of um, putting them on, you know, zip it and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And having them collected because the charity shop a lot of it is because i have to carry them because obviously i don't drive and they're heavy they're very heavy so 60 if, books is heavy whereas if it they'll pay you a little bit of money for them but also they, they come and collect, collect them yeah very and then good. whatever but if it won't buy i then do walk to the charity shop but well done, my you. shelves are all single stacked again amazing I just that feel... is cool that you're under 200 books as well yeah and i started this year off with 366 books and i've now got 198 cool and most of that isn't down to me reading them most of that is down to me chucking them chucking them yeah well we're going to be doing in january we're going to be talking about um reading resolutions and things and what we've what we've got planned and stuff like that so yeah but i've been having a little think of it but once so last year on christmas day you got me um through black spruce white oleander and i can't remember the other one you got me oh the past yeah, the past, yeah. Um, and I started reading Through Black Spruce on Christmas Day um, just because I like to pick up a book that I've got that day. So I always try and make sure that any of my reading, and I won't read anything Christmassy past Christmas Eve because, like, Christmas is over then. Yeah. And I started reading it, and I used a bit of the Radio Times or the telly magazine oh, I remember you um, saying this, that had yeah. Christmas Eve. And then when I lent it to my cousin earlier this year, um, the Christmas Day page of the Radio Times fell out. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And it really reminded me that I was reading it on Christmas Day. And I remember staying up quite late um, reading it on Christmas Day, very much enjoying that book. That was, that was the first book I read of this year. Very much enjoyed it. Yeah, so I started a year off well, didn't I? Well done. Thank you. Well done, Mercedes. I feel pressured now to do the same this year. Pressure. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. pressure, pressure. Well, Mercedes and I are concerned because we are about to watch the second to last episode <sighs> of the UK Apprentice. Yeah. Um, which starts at nine. Um, so we need to be settled by nine. Yeah. And have our hot drinks and things like that. Mm. Because that's when we need to be settled. So we've just done this podcast. It was a lovely chatty one. But I very much enjoyed doing it. Yeah, me too. It's been nice to... Uh, to chat about our christmas plans i always just like doing... hearing what people do for christmas oh so do i yeah when i was at school i always used to be like what do you do on christmas what do you do on christmas and like very much enjoy it i always used to though whenever my friends used to like because i always used to say like how did your presents work sort of thing and whenever my friends told me how they their parents used to do their presents i used to be like, that's so rubbish compared to how my mum does it so how do you do it <laughs> so my mum always got us a sack that would be put at the end of our bed yeah which would have like like, I don't know, like 10 presents in. And we were told they were from Father Christmas. Yeah. So when we asked for like board were. games and toy, like little toys, they'd be in that. Yeah. And then our main present, for example, if we asked for a bike or like when you're a kid, you have those fake kitchens, like the big things, that would be the present from mum and dad. Yeah. And my mum did it like that because that, like if she said everything's from Father Christmas, then I wouldn't have said thank you to my mum and dad, would I? That's true, yeah. Whereas like Johnny's mum and dad, they just got them a sack which they thought was from Father Christmas. So they never said thank you to their mum and dad for anything. Did they, they, from they, Christmas? they believed it was from Father Christmas. So in the olden days, when I was a child, we used to get a, a um, stocking which had like, like little bits in it. So like a few little books, puzzle books, yeah. like, like toiletries and just like a few things. Always had a new toothbrush in there, always. <laughs> um, and that was from Father Christmas. And then I feel like my presents downstairs were from my mum and dad. Yeah, exactly. And my mum would this is quite strict and whenever people say oh we just sit in our pajamas for ages on christmas day i'm like that's so yeah. bizarre but my mum would we'd unwrap our presents 
from Father Christmas really early in the morning because we'd be so excited. Yeah. And then we'd all have to bath or shower and get fully dressed in all of our nice fancy Christmas clothes because my mum yeah. would get, make us all dress up special for Christmas. Yeah, we do too. So but David's I... family don't. So I'm always like proper glammed up. Yeah. And they're all like in tracksuit bottoms. So and... still now I buy a Christmas outfit to wear on Christmas Day. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. And Even then... though none of David's family do it. I in fact ordered a dress today. Yeah, I need to do, do it actually. I haven't actually looked. But so and then once we were all up dressed and mum had got the turkey in the oven then we'd be allowed to run up our presents from mum and dad so it'd be like delayed gratification for your biggest present which i well, quite liked nice. and when you open presents did you all just go like gung-ho all no lit? we weren't allowed yeah no we nor were we and even now opening presents at my mum like my nan used to be like god it takes so long to open presents and it wasn't that we had like an obscene amount because i'll tell you at david's house we have an obscene amount yeah. but we just took so long and my mum was like right Who's it from? Yeah, that's what we Let's did have still. a look. Right. Let's have a look at that. Oh, right. Okay. Charlotte, it's your go now. What have you got? Who's that from? Or like sometimes the only time we'd be able to open something at the same time is if we clearly had the same thing. Yeah. But well, just... What my mum would do, my mum will say, everyone get your present from like my brother Joshua. Has everyone got their presents from Joshua? And then yeah. we'd all unwrap and all say thank you. Whereas Johnny's family will look, someone could be wrapping up present from their mum and dad. Someone could be wrapping that's something what from it's their neighbour like... and... The only amount of order around David's mum and dad's house is that, like, your your presents are in a pile. No, and they're they not even wrap... in a pile at Johnny's parents. Oh, so they they've got it, and and everyone's presents are wrapped in a different kind of wrapping paper. No, my mum does that, but they don't do that. So Johnny's mum and dad is really confusing. It's all in one big pile. So yeah. sometimes Johnny's sister might get ten presents in a row, while like his other sister gets nothing because of the way the. Pe- presents have been piled oh so they're not opening them at the same time though they're all like someone's near the pile and they're just sort of bunging them out them out yeah but it could be that someone's getting them at a way quicker pace and it sometimes johnny's mom and dad have like accidentally messed the tags up or the tags have come off so someone will unwrap something a bit i don't think this is for me and then i'll have to pass it to who it's actually for (laughs) (laughs) oh you know what i heard a good tip today i listened to the audiobook of um hetty feathers christmas um, a, J- a Jacqueline Wilson book and at the end she said if you've got the same um, Christmas wrapping paper for everyone but you want to differentiate use a different colour ribbon for, per person you won't have to put tags on it and I was yeah, like oh, yeah. that's fucking genius yeah my mum just uses this different wrapping paper for each of us so she doesn't have to do tags and stuff yeah so I feel like I mean I bought all the same wrapping paper so I was like if I can just get my hands on like some different ribbon then I'll know who's who then won't I yeah but now I'm getting nervous that we're going to miss The Apprentice. I know. We have to. Who do you think? Right, just so it's here, who do you think is going to be in the final of The Apprentice? So it's just two people. Yeah. Do we say it at the same time? Yeah. One, two, two three. three. James and Sarah. Okay, you and James. <laughs> oh, both who, think James. Who did I bet? I bet James, didn't I, to begin with? I bet I said Michaela and um, Anisha, but Anisha ended up being mental. <laughs> yeah, I think I just bet. James and Michaela. Yeah. I think I might have said Michaela as well. Yeah. You think Sarah though, rather than Michaela? I think Michaela will fall apart in interviews and I don't think yeah, Sarah will. But I think she will, but I think he really, really likes Michaela. Yeah, I think he does. So I'm quite looking forward to it. I'm just, I, it's been so cringy this series. I've literally been like screaming and not able to look at the telly. Yeah, so, been really And I'm bad. watching it on my own, so I'm going to be like proper cringing. Can't wait. Yeah. Anyway, just to finish off as we normally do, what book are you going to read next, Mercedes? I think I'll probably end up. I'm going to have a little look tonight and see if the next book in this fantasy series is at my library. Oh, cool. And I'm going to reserve it. And I think in all likelihood, even though I should pace myself so that I've not got a big gap in between the second and the third. If you're enjoying it, just go for it. Yeah, and I'm probably just going to go straight on to the next one. Cool. Um, I'm going to read because I am basically out of Christmas books now. So I'm saying, oh, yeah, I read all Christmas books in December. Um, the only other book I had was a book that um, Pick, uh, Pam McMillan sent me called The Darkest Day. And it's a crime thriller set in winter. And I was like, oh, well, I've got that. Maybe I'll read that. And I was like, well, there's loads of sort of books set in winter. And yeah. I went to the Penguin platform party last night and picked up a book called The Toy Makers by Robert Dinsdale, which comes out in February. Mm-hmm. And it just sounds quite cute. It's set in um, 1917 and it's about a toy shop that sells toys that capture the imagination of children and adults alike. Patchwork dogs that seem alive, toy boxes that are bigger on the inside, soldiers that can fight battles on their own. Into this family business comes young Kathy Ray running away from a shameful past. The Emporium takes her in, makes her one of its own. But Kathy is about to discover that the Emporium has secrets of its own. So I feel like, nice. Yeah, that sounds good. Female main character, sort of bit of literary, uh, a bit of um, historical fiction, set in winter. I feel into it. So good yeah, call. that's a good one. Also, you just reminded me because you said about magic and stuff. 
We did record a Harry Potter podcast. Oh, yeah. We had so much fun recording it and the questions were brilliant. It really was one of the best ones. It was so fun. However, I lost the recording. It didn't record properly. It wasn't your fault, though. It was it's because... I was so frustrated. You hadn't updated it and the update yeah. is the, the thingy, but it shouldn't happen again. And it also means that we can talk about it again. Yeah, so we, we have still the got the questions written yeah. down. Um, and we thought we wouldn't re-record straight away because then we'd just be like repeating so we thought we'd relieve a little bit of time the the answers will seem fresh again so there was no november but this christmas one hopefully is more than made up for it and then january we're going to be talking about um our reading resolutions i love yeah i love talking about reading resolutions i'm so excited about it and um maybe some books that we're looking forward to in the first half of 2018 futuristic so we hope you've enjoyed this episode Merry Christmas, everyone. And we'd love to know, because uh, I'm so nosy about people's sort of, you know, Christmas celebrations. Yeah. Um, if you celebrate Christmas, we'd love to know how you celebrate it. So do write down below so we can have a little nosy at your life. And if you have any uh, festive foods that you like, then also write that down. And if anyone else is having to go through the injustice of having to have two Christmas dinners back to back rather than a Christmas dinner and then a Boxing Day buffet spread, then let's start a support group. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because I feel so sad about it. Oh dear. I'm going to have to be really like nice about it on the day because obviously everyone's really nice at Christmas and I'm going to be like, oh great, thanks so much for this second Christmas dinner I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty, are they? Yeah. But yeah, that's it guys. So thanks so much um, and I guess we'll see you again in the future, next year. Yeah, next year. You're crazy. See you next year.